So May is family month here in Korea and the theme for today is different things that you and your family can do in Seoul on a budget. So what we're going to do is visit three of Seoul's palaces. The first palace is going to be Gyeongbokgung behind me and all of this you can do for under $10 and it's a really great experience to learn more about Korean culture. Um, learn about the history and there's also some great restaurants that you can visit nearby so you can kind of cover everything within a day or two pretty easily. Let's go inside Gyeongbokgung and check out the first palace. So behind me is the main hall in Gyeongbokgung. This is where the king would accept visitors and kind of run the day-to-day -day operations of Korea. When you're traveling around the palace, you can see all sorts of different kind of animal statues, especially around the main hall here they have different animals across each of the points. Well, Gyeongbokgung is one of the most popular palaces today in Seoul and feels like the largest. Chandokgung to the east actually covers a lot more ground as it has the secret garden or Biwan. So if you're in Seoul, Gyeongbokgung is a really good place to start your trip. There's four other palaces that you can check out. end up visiting Gyeongbokgung you can probably spend about an hour or two inside the palace. If you're crunched on time you can probably get through the main parts in about an hour. They do also have tours throughout the week as well in English, Korean, Chinese, and maybe Japanese um, but you can check their website for more information on that and they do have reservations for booking the tour so keep that in mind as well. Due to the age of Gyeongbokgung and the other palaces, they're constantly having to be restored and parts of them rebuilt. And after three years, last fall, one of the most popular pavilions at Gyeongbokgung finally reopened. We're gonna go walk over there and check it out. So don't quote me on this, but I think in the K-drama Kingdom, the one about zombies in the Joseon Dynasty, I believe they use this pavilion during the ice scene, I think at the end of season one, where like they attracted all the zombies to the center and made them fall through the ice. But I'll check to make sure and let you guys know. Bridge right there, they actually moved from its original location and moved it to a new spot. So if you've been here before and you thought it was somewhere else, it was somewhere else before. And I believe they restored it to the original location. Over the past few years, I've been back to Gyeongbokgung. This is the first time that we've been back here since tourism kind of opened up back in April. And so it's really cool to see a lot of different foreigners exploring the palaces, trying out hanbok and wearing the traditional clothing. And even though it's a little bit more crowded now, it's good to see tourism coming back alive here in Korea. If you guys get the opportunity to visit Korea, I encourage you guys to check out the different palaces, see them for yourself, because watching it in a video is one thing, but being able to see and breathe and walk among the history of Korea is really exciting. Before we head to the next palace, we're just going to make one more stop. So I'm going to take you guys to the other pavilion that is at Gyeongbokgung. The 
pavilion behind me is one of the most popular spots to get your picture taken if you decide to rent a humble. So if you want to get your picture taken here, you may have to wait a little bit. If you're visiting Gungwokun, that's a great spot to get your picture taken along with the main hall near the entrance. If you're getting to Gyeongbokgung by public transport, line 3, the orange line is really easy. You can just get off at Gyeongbokgung station and it's just a short like three or four minute walk and you're right here. And there are a couple of museums in the area as well. So if you're stopping at Gyeongbokgung, you can stop at the other two places fairly easily. Let's head to the next palace. Um, it's close, it's about a 20 minute walk to the next palace. So we're just gonna walk there. We could take the bus, but not really worth getting on and off that frequently really for me and it's always good exercise to yeah well, our next stop is here in Gyeonggi-gun um, it is one of the five palaces here in Seoul um, admission to Gyeonggi-gun is free and it's located Seoul Museum of History while you're here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look inside. So of the five Joseon palaces here in Seoul, Gyeonggi-gun is probably the most least known or least visited on here. Um, during the Japanese occupation period, much of Gyeonggi-gun was actually torn down or moved elsewhere. So it doesn't have like the same feel as like Gyeongbokgun or Chandokun or one of the other five palaces. I do have to say that Gyeonggi-gun is quite peaceful. It's not as large as some of the other palaces, but it's really got that, I don't know. A lot of it I think was still preserved in its original state on here. So you can kind of, it's like some of the palaces, you can kind of tell when they've added new parts to it, but he can still seems to have some of that original feel to it. You take my love for granted. Say a bunch of stuff you never mean, yeah. there in Gyeonggi-gun so if you are in the area like if you're going to be visiting the Seoul Museum of History I recommend stopping by here at Gyeonggi-gun as well um, it's not as crowded as some of the other palaces so you can take your time and not feel rushed you can get plenty of pictures while you're here and yeah so let's go ahead and head on to our last palace for today. We're going to be heading to Doksugun. Um, we're going to be walking there again. It's only about a 20 minute walk. So I'll see you guys when we get there. So we're almost to Doksugun. We're actually near the outside gate here. So the Doksugun stone walkway. Um, one of the urban legends is that if you and your partner walk along this wall, you guys will end up breaking up. So if you're visiting here with one of your loved ones, maybe avoid this area, but during the fall, it's a really beautiful spot with all the leaves changing colors. So if you're not superstitious, I would say come down here and take a look. Usually you can also find buskers in the area performing different songs. We're about a minute from getting inside Doksugun, so we'll get our ticket and head inside.
one of the unique parts about Dokusugun that you don't see in the other four palaces is the more like neoclassical western style buildings that you would see maybe in like the US or Europe um, because the Dokusugun was the palace of King Gojong eventually um, and he ended up building a new palace that was more western in appearance as opposed to the more traditional Korean style. So King Gojong really wanted to make Korea into a world power and so in 1897 he brought an end to the Joseon dynasty and started the Korean Empire and with that he built a whole new palace that was more western in appearance. Um, he started adopting some western customs. This is also during a time where you start seeing uh, different Korean officials along with the now Emperor Gojong um, wearing more western style clothing as well. It's really interesting to walk around Doksugun and see the dynamic between the old and the new kind of combined and when you visit Seoul today you kind of see those same images where you have like the mix of the old Joseon dynasty with the palaces and the different historical sites mixed with these very modern and new buildings throughout the downtown area just like right there and when you compare it to a country like the US the US has only been around for less than 300 years the, the Joseon dynasty by itself has lasted for much longer so it's really interesting to see the history of like the Joseon dynasty and even earlier with like the three kingdoms so that's gonna do it for our trip here in Seoul I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the three palaces today and some of the other sites while we were walking around the city. If you enjoyed the adventure, go ahead and give the video a like. Make sure that you're also subscribed so you can stay in touch for our future videos. And until next time, this is Harold with South Korea Travels. See you guys on the next adventure. for you